Hi everybody, this is Luke. In this channel we covered mostly two brands of mid-drive motors, the Tongsheng TSDZ2 and the Bufang BBS02. These two motors are very popular and their power ranges between 250 and 750 watt depending on their configuration. Sometimes when someone wants to install a mid-drive conversion kit on its bike, it's not easy to decide which one of the two is the right one. There is, first of all, a big difference between cadence and torque sensing system that clearly divide people's opinion about which one is the best. Spoiler, it depends. Then there is build quality and materials. Some motors have overheat issues, some have simpler wire connections, on some you can install a shift sensor and the list could go on. Let me stop here for now and show you in this video the newest kit from Tongsheng, the TSTZ8. I'll tell you why I choose it and whether you might consider buying it or not. Believe it or not, the choice of the motor really comes down to what you need your bike for. Many say that one motor is simply better than the other one. Period. That can be farther from the truth. When I've been requested recently to convert someone else's bike, thing that I don't usually do by the way, my first question was, what would you do with your bike? The answer was something like, I will mostly use it in the city to move around. So I asked, why not using the local bike sharing service? And the answer was, it feels so unnatural to me. It feels like accelerating out of my control. This answer suggesting me torque sensor, but I had to be careful. So I also asked, imagine a bike that will accelerate as much as you do with your legs. If you get tired, your bike won't replace your missing strength. The answer was, I don't care. My CD is quite flat. Plus, I will use it mostly for short distances, less than 10 kilometers. That last answer confirmed me that a Tongsheng motor could be the way to go. The TSDZ2 comes in two variants, 36 and 48 volt, with a rated power of, respectively, 500 watt and 750 watt. You can also find, respectively, a software limited 250 watt and 500 watt. Limits then can be removed by a firmware update. My idea was to go with 48 volt at 750 watt, but many reports suggest that this one shows overheating problems due to its design. I never personally had this issue, but it might just be because I own the 36 volt variant. Other concerns I have about the TSDZ2 are related to its throttle, quite slow, its build quality, a bit too plasticky, the single ring mechanism, which is too weak to firmly lock the motor, and also its low stock performance. To gain a little bit of extra performance, we can install the open source firmware maintained by the community, but as we've seen, it requires extra time and skills in order to be done. That's why I opted for the TSDZ8. As I'm writing now, it has been extensively tested, and I wanted to give it a try. Some of the advantages, apparently, include better heat dissipation, better build quality, and the fact that it feels, out of the box, comparable with the TSDZ2 with the open source firmware. This is definitely a good thing, since there's no possibility to modify the firmware as I'm writing this script. Let's now talk about the bike frame. The base is, this time, a Rockrider ST120, which is a perfect frame for this conversion. Oh, before you head down to the comments, the answer is no. The fork is not mounted backwards. If you don't believe me, do your own research. This bike has mechanical disc brakes, which are easier to maintain and be used with conversion kit's lever with brake sensor. I want to install a 48 volt 15 ampere hour battery to ensure sufficient range and less charging frequency. The only issue is that this particular bike is the M size, which means no down tube here. For this reason, I decided to get a rear mounting battery, which has the downside to move some of the weight backwards, but has the advantage to include battery powered rear lights. I ordered the battery, the motor, and my favorite frontal all in one light plus horn. All packages arrived after about one week, since the seller stock was within the EU. Let's start by unboxing the battery. There are two buttons on the back, one to check the battery level if it's not charging and the other to switch between fixed light, blinking light and no light.
The first problem I faced was related to the tube covering the space reserved to the seat. I didn't overthink too much and just grabbed my angle grinder to remove the extra tube. After some polishing, it came out as a nice job. It's now time to unbox the motor. Let's see what we have inside. The chainring has the default 44 teeth number. This particular package comes with the classic VLCD5 display that we all learn to deal with. With the speed sensor it also came a splitter if you want to install backward light. I will not use it because of the battery, but it's nice to have. Since the motor comes with an XT60 male connector, the kit also includes a conversion cable for the battery plug. And finally, we can see the motor itself. I would say that it looks and weights like the Bafang BBS-02B. It has a more premium look. Also, the build quality is way less plasticky. The cabling system is still very simple, just three cables getting out of the motor. I definitely like it, even if there's still no support for a shift sensor. Before installing the motor, be sure that it doesn't touch the bike frame. This is a video from Tongsheng itself, which shows how to add spacers, in this case, both included in the kit. About the locking ring mechanism, this specific bracket is the same used for the TSDZ2, but the system has been changed. Now it's more similar to the Bafangs one, with a double ring on top of the bracket. This also means that now it is possible to install a central stand if you like, or use the freed space to pass some cable like I did. The chain ring is also different now, with this concave area which will then be covered by a plastic chain guard. Very nice. Unfortunately, the battery cable was not that long and the XT60 adapter was also very short, so I had to modify it and make it longer.
No surprise here, everything works as expected. After testing the throttle, I can confirm that it's still slow, <laughs> as on the TSDZ2. So if you really need to use it, consider going with the Fang. After every mid-drive installation, you will have to readjust the rear derailleur. In this case, not only that. The previous chainring had 32 teeth, so I also had to buy and resize a new chain. Yep, sad but true. Here I will show my settings. The main changes were about the wheel size and the maximum ampere. I increased it a bit in order to allow higher battery peaks. And this concludes the installation part. This was the introduction video to this new motor from Tongsheng. A full test drive is not ready yet, but I have it planned, so be sure to subscribe and like this video if you like to support my work. Also, if you want, there's a link in the description if you're willing to donate something. What's the key takeaway here? If you're in the market for a new motor, you don't have to build cargo bikes. You like the natural bike feeling of a torque sensing motor. You have two options. If you want to build something up to 500 watt, the TSDZ2B is still a great choice. If you don't like the performance, you can still install the OSF afterward. If you want to build a 750 watt one, then go for the TSDZ8. It will be well tuned out of the box and it won't suffer from overheating issues. If you need instead something that will assist you no matter what, whether you push for it or just fake it, something easier to tune on the software side and with a great throttle response, a Bofang motor is your choice. Feel free to browse this channel for more in-depth comparison and explanations. Let me know what you think down in the comment section and I'll see you on the next one.